Hey physics students, it's Mr. Caldall. Got a little uh, friction mini lab help video here for you because I know that some of you were having a little bit of difficulty thinking through some of the ideas associated with this lab. So remember that the force of gravity we can always find by doing uh, 9.8 times the mass and if we don't know the mass you just let the m come along for the ride. And then I'm hopeful that you'll remember that the normal force is going to be the force that the surface exerts on the object and unless there's something funny going on it's going to be equal to FG. Uh, we talked in class about putting a little arrow over here to remind us of the direction of the motion. Now remember that's not a force that's just telling you which way it's headed and since this is a friction mini lab friction is dot uh, that's not going to help the motion it's going to hinder the motion. Now the challenge is we don't know that force of friction. So what did we measure? Well, uh, depending on your class there, you either did uh, one trial with me or you did three trials if you're in first period. But at the end of the day, you probably measured some things that would be super nice and useful in a little bit of a kinematics situation, thinking about all that motion stuff we did. So I would probably go with, uh, you know, an initial position and then you probably measured some final position. This was giving students a little bit of a hard time, you know. If you think about it, the book was given a push, it was given a shove, so it definitely had some initial velocity when it came either out of your hand or off of your foot if you kicked it. And you probably didn't know that initial velocity, but I can tell you this, the book came to a stop. So that's going to help you know that final velocity. I'm not going to write it because you should know it. And the reason all this kinematic stuff is super useful is because we've been talking about F equals MA. So again, if you don't know M, you just let M go along for the ride. And maybe your answer has an M in it. So the last little hint that I'll give you is when you look at this diagram, I'm hoping that you can look at that and see who the helping force is and who the hindering force is. If you look real close here, maybe there's a helping force, maybe there's not. All right? But if you think about it, once you let go of that book, does it require a force to stay in motion? Or is an object in motion going to remain in motion without the need for some sort of helping force? So I don't want to do all of it for you, but I'm hopeful that this helps you out. And if you need more help, come see me during warrior period. Okay, take care and I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.